Yes, Miss Fisk. Is there any mail for me? No, just this one letter. Oh. No sign of Bates yet. Not yet. Oh, dear, I do hope you won't miss your train. No, I mustn't. Oh, Lucy, hurry with that bag. Just coming, miss. Oh, Ellen, about that business I want you to see to for me in London. This is for Mr. Scott at the bank. It's about those Brazilian bonds of mine. The way the market is this week, I think they ought to be good. Now, you get outside and keep your eyes open for Bates. Yes, miss. And this address is just off Barclay Square. Go to the servants' entrance and ask for Mr. Blades. He's the butler. Say that you've come from me with a message for Lord Kenardington. And will he give it to his lordship privately? Ellen, you're not paying attention. Oh, but I am, Miss Fisk. What would be the best time to call? Let's see. Harry always used to dine around eight. <laughs> you call about half past seven. Yes, very well. Oh, you seem upset. Bad news? Oh, I don't want to bother you with my troubles. Oh, it isn't a question of bothering me with your troubles. Why, you've become almost like my daughter. The letters from my sisters, Emily and Louisa. They're very unhappy back in London without me. After all, I've only seen them once since I've come to work for you, Miss Fisk. Well, you'll be seeing them today, won't you? And then everything will be all right, I'm sure. Oh, Miss Fisk! Bates is coming. Well, tell him to hurry himself. My kindest regards to your sister, Ellen. Thank you, Miss Fisk. I... I've written them so much about you. How kind you've been. Oh, stuff and nonsense. I'm fond of you. You see, you look cool. That was a juicy one. Mm. Perhaps you... you might allow them down for a little visit one day. Oh, dear, look what the damp's done. Well, certainly, yes. By all means, at any time. You know, Lucy polished this table all yesterday afternoon. <gasps> Miss Fisk. Yes? <gasps> it's occurred to me that... Well, since they've been so wretched lately, and you said you might allow them down for a visit one day. Oh, that, yes, indeed, you tell them. Perhaps in the spring when it's warm and sunny. Well, what I was going to ask was... Might I bring them back with me this time? No. Oh, well, now, Ellen. Oh, they won't be a bother, I promise, Miss Fisk. And it'll mean so much to them. <laughs> oh, very well, my dear. You bring them with you by all means for a day or two. Oh, thank you, Miss Fisk. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Well, don't try, my dear. He's here, Miss. About time, the good for nothing. Ellen, have you got everything? Yes, Miss Fisk. Good morning, ma'am. Bates, you might have been more prompt. What on earth made you so late? Uh, you can't go galloping over the roads with a lady in her delicate condition. She's going to throw a cough, she be. And I'm taking her to the vets, I am. Well, kindly try and arrange for her not to throw any coughs till you get Miss Ellen safely to the station. Well, coughs don't come by timetable, lady. Well, trains do. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye, Miss Fisk. Goodbye, Ellen. Goodbye, Miss Ellen. Goodbye, Lucy. Don't forget the allowance from you know who. No, I shan't. <laughs> Goodbye. Lucy? Yes, Miss Fisk. Oh. All right, now there's a day's work to be done. This is very, very nice. What's that you've got there, miss? Oh, it's the score of the new comic opera. It's all the rage in London. The Mikado. Mikado. Oh. I used to tour the provinces with the gentleman who sent it to me. Look, he signed it for me. Rutland Barrington. For my adored Leonora with <laughs> fond memories of... <clears throat> uh... Yes, well, never mind about that. Get out and do the dishes. Yes, miss. 
on a tree by a willow, a little tom tit sang willow, tit willow, tit willow. And I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit? Sing it willow, tit willow, tit willow. Go on, don't stop. Who are you? What are you doing here? Listening. Very nice, too. What do you want? Ask me in and I'll tell you. Very well, young man, you may come in. But mind your manners. All right, miss. Here. Isn't this where Miss Ellen Creed lives? Yes, yeah, she lives here. What do you wish to see her about? It's a personal matter. She's my aunt. I'm Albert Feather. Your aunt? I'm a bride. Her mother was my stepfather's uncle's second wife. <laughs> <laughs> and where do you come from? Gravesend. I, uh, I work in a bank there. That's a very long walk. Hadn't you better sit down? There you go. I'm afraid it's all been for nothing. Your aunt Ellen's gone to London on some business for me. How long will she be away? Oh, a few days. A few? Blimey, that'll be too late. Um, is there anything I can do? I'm Miss Fisk. Your aunt's been working here as a sort of housekeeper companion. I, I didn't know. I, I haven't seen her for five years. Well, can I help? I wonder. Oh, what's the trouble? Or is it trouble? It's trouble right enough. I, uh, I hardly like to tell you. Oh, I see. What's the amount? Twelve pounds. How much? Twelve pounds. Oh, my goodness, that is a lot of money. I know. What's worse, I've got to have it by tonight. I'm short at the bank. It means jail if I can't put it back before the cashier checks up. Gambling? No, a girl. Oh. Are you engaged to her? No, she's an actress. She was in a travelling company in Gravesend. What? At the old Grand? You know it? Why, I played there years ago, of course. Oh, you were an actress? Front row of the chorus. Fourth from the right. <laughs> she was in the chorus, too. Oh, I expect you took her out to supper and then she persuaded you to go round the shops with her. How did you know? Imagination, my boy. At any rate, she's over the hills now to some other town. And to some other fool, the little cheat. Oh, don't you worry any more about it. I'll give you the 12 pounds. You will? Perhaps I owe it to you, in a sense. Or to some other fool. Oh, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> now, you wait here. I'll just run upstairs and get my keys. Pity there aren't more like you. Well, that, my lad, is a matter of opinion. Do you mind if I tinkle on your ivories? No, do. Thank you. It's the same the whole world over. It... It's the poor what gets uh, the blame, while the rich has all the pleasures. Now ain't that a blinking shame. Oh. Hello. Oh, you did scare me. I thought I was hearing things. You were. Oh, but I mean, the man's voice. It's so funny here. Doesn't the tide wash up many male fish, my angel? No. A man just scares his handsome cabs in these parts. And that is all but the old ones. The young ones go off to London or some foreign part as soon as they can. And are you going off to foreign parts? Depends. Depends? On what? If anyone ever asks me. I shouldn't think with eyes like them there'd be any difficulty. <laughs> oh, go on. What's your name? Lucy. What's yours? Albert. I'm Miss Creed's nephew. Funny. I never heard about you. Oh, that must be remedied. How about making the most of a male fish? Now one has been washed up, eh? What about a smacker? No, you mustn't. I don't know you. You don't have to know people to kiss them. I 
do. All right, my girl, it's your loss. Huh. Think a lot of yourself, don't you? Has Lucy been entertaining you, Albert? Hey? Eh? Oh, she came in. We uh, had a word or two. <laughs> nice looker, isn't she? I, uh, I didn't notice. Oh, come now, Al, but don't lose your sense of humor. Hope you're not one of those people who won't benefit from experience, otherwise my 12 pounds will be rather wasted, won't it? Don't you worry, Miss Fisk, I've had my lesson. I hope so. Now, this is where we keep our little hoard. It's an old bake oven, really. Proper tomb, isn't it? Yeah. What's that? <laughs> This is what they use to pull the loaves out of it. Oh, of course, we don't use it as a bake oven. It hasn't been used in years. Now then, 12 pounds, I think you said. I, uh, I suppose you couldn't make it 15. No, I couldn't. No, you couldn't. Uh, do, uh, do I give you an IOU? No, thank you. This isn't a loan. Shouldn't like you to incur the remorse of not paying it back. You're a daisy. Oh, very prettily done, Albert. <laughs> now, let's forget all about it. If you'd come next week, you'd have found three of your aunts here. Ellen's bringing her sisters back from London. What, the potty ones? Potty? <laughs> Queer as mice in a cage. Oh, uh, they're quite harmless. Especially when Aunt Ellen's around. Well, that's a comfort. They're coming to stay here for a few days. They seem to mean quite a great deal to your Aunt Ellen. Oh, uh, they would. She's looked after them since she was a kid. She's watched over them like there was a couple of uh, perishing babes in arms. <laughs> I think that's very commendable of her. Perhaps, but uh, think of all the fun she's missing. What, for example? You know. I see. Well, I've got to be toddling along. I'll pay you back as soon as I can. Oh, uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention our little transaction to Aunt Ellen. Very well, if you like. How about, uh, you know, what's her name? Lucy? Yeah. Oh, she won't say anything. I'll take care of that. Thanks. So long, my lady. And again from the heart. I'll never forget your kindness as long as I live. I hope you live a great deal longer than that. Isn't it funny, Ellen? You can't see the wind and you can't touch it, but it's there. I think you better have this round you, dear. It's getting quite chilly. Listen, what's that? Those are the Priory bells, dear, from over the marshes. Oh, I shan't like that. She hates bells. Especially church bells. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Aren't the marshes pretty? The grass is too long and untidy. If I had a knife and a bit of string, I'd cut it and tie it up in bundles. Are there any sheep here in the marshes? Yes, miss. I think sheep are so clever to chew their cud the way they do. It's very difficult. I've tried. You ought to be a sailor, miss. They're always chewing tobacco. The man I was to marry was a sailor. He gave me this. That's all I have to remember him by. He was wrecked at sea. They were all drowned. Must have been a bit of sadness for you, Missy. Oh, no. I've quite forgotten what he looked like. I saw a drowned man once. They took him out of the Thames. He was green. Frogs. There must be lots of frogs. We used to have such fun with them at home. We used to put them on the dining room table and make them jump in the marmalade pot. Isn't it beautiful? 
beautiful. Oh, dear, it's all cobwebby. And it has a horrid smell. It mustn't be wasted. I shall save it till next year, and then I'll put it back again. Who knows where we'll be next year? Well, not in London, anyway. You promised that. Yes, I promised that. Look. Louisa, how did that happen? She did it. Who? That woman in London. She didn't give us enough food, either. Discipline, she said. Louisa used to cry all night. I didn't. She couldn't discipline me. We'll be all right here, though, won't we, with Miss Fisk? She won't beat us. No, darling, she won't beat you. No one will again, ever. Now, remember what I told you both. You're not to talk too much. Wait until Miss Fisk gets to know you better. But how can she get to know us better if we don't talk? <laughs> Come along, dear. Bates, get the luggage, will you? Yes, ma'am. Well, they look harmless. What, miss? Oh, never mind. Go and put the kettle on. Yes, miss. Well, here we are. I'm glad. Miss Fisk, my sister Emily, my sister Louisa. How do you do, Emily? We're very glad to be here. Louisa, I don't like people to touch me. Oh, I'm afraid Miss Fisk will think you're very rude. They're rather tired, poor dears. I never get tired. I sometimes walk about the house all night. Do you indeed? No, of course she doesn't, Miss Fisk. Oh, what beautiful furniture. Just like we used to have before we lost all our money. Some of these are our things, dear. Miss Fisk bought them at my curio shop. I want my tea. Emily, see? Here's the grand cham himself. Remember when father brought him for us? I wonder if his head still nods. Ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, Louisa, dear. dong. Wait, be careful. You'll scratch the furniture. Very good, ma'am. I must say you've brought enough luggage with you. Oh, we brought everything. Everything? Well, we had to. Why? Well, when they sent for the police, oh, there was just... Oh, my dears. I'm sure all this can't possibly interest Miss Fisk. I think we'd better go up and rest a bit before tea. Whatever you say, Helen. Come along, Emily. That smelly train was very dirty. She's always fussing about the dirt. I hope you keep things tidy here. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Don't you agree? Well, I'm quite clean, I believe. But I don't know that I'm particularly godly. Oh, I thought you were a Roman. Isn't that yours? Miss Fisk is a Roman, dear, and a very devoted one. Come along, Louisa, Emily. Father didn't approve of Romans. And neither do I. It's one of those boobies. Miss Emily was drawing cat's faces on brown paper all yesterday afternoon when you were out. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. My lovely paisley shawl, it's ruined. You'd better go and get some vinegar and see if you can do something about this spot. Yes, miss. I'm utterly exhausted clearing up after their mess. I don't wonder, miss, so am I. And you should see their bedroom. It's like a goat pen. Oh, it, I know it. If it isn't one thing, it's another. Why, for the last six weeks, I might just as well have been living in the middle of Piccadilly Circus. My heart won't stand it. Go and get me my smelling salts. Where are they, miss? In the usual place, of course. Nothing's in the usual place these days. Oh. Well, then get me a cold compress. I'm going to lie down and take a nap while I can. Yes, miss. Miss Fisk. Yes, what is it? What is it? Will they be staying much longer? They'll have my invitation to go this evening. Oh, dear, I wonder where Emily's gone to. She ought to be back by now. I can't see her anywhere. I wish I were brave like Emily. I should like to take long walks, too. 
and pick up the things. Perhaps I shall be able to after we've stayed here longer. I'm sure you will, dear. I shall be staying here, shan't I? You're not planning to send us away, are you, Ellen? No, dear, of course I'm not. This is what you've always promised us. A little place in the country where we can always be safe. Yes. It's the one thing I've been working for ever since we had to give up the old house. Well, naturally, estuary house could never be like that. But it's nice enough. Yes, and Miss Fisk has been very kind to us. Miss Fisk? May I tell you something, Ellen? Just one of my secrets. Of course you may. I don't like Miss Fisk. Couldn't we send her away? Then it would really be just the three of us. But I keep telling you, Louisa, it's her house. Oh, no. You'll never make me believe that. All our lovely things are there. We'll never have to go away, will we? No, darling, I promised you. Never. I think Miss Fisk wants us to go. Both of us. Well, I'm sure I can persuade her to let you stay. Oh, dear, I do wish Emily would come. Maybe we'd better get along home in case she's waiting there for us. Come along, dear. Don't want her upsetting Miss Fisk again. She could be very tactless. Water, will you do with it? Put it in the woodshed, where it belongs. The woodshed's full, and I won't have you cluttering up my kitchen with it. Very well, then. Oh, dear. Oh, what is it now? Miss Fisk sees this. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, my goodness, more wood. Yes, Miss Emily dumped it. Oh, well, never mind. You get out of here. I got a nice lot today. What are you thinking of, making a mess with it all over my clean floor? That girl wouldn't let me put it in the kitchen. And she's quite right. I told you to stop bringing in wood. We've more than enough. I must tidy up the riverbanks. I hate waste. And I hate litter. Now, you clear it away immediately. I won't be ordered to do things. Oh. Oh, this is too much, my best polished table. Look how these shells have stretched it. What's this? Wet seaweed and a horrid dead bird. Oh, leave my bird alone. And my shells. They're my treasures. We don't understand expensive things. It's so long since we had any. I know it's very simple of me, but I am Emily. simple. What's wrong? I hate her. She threw my bird into the fireplace. Emily, control yourself. Look what she's done with her ridiculous shells. Take a month's hard polishing to put this right. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Fisk. I'll put it right. Oh, no, Ellen, you shan't. I'll do it. Let me do it. I'll polish it every day, all through the winter. Well, it's very sweet of you, Miss Louisa, but I don't think you'll be here all through the winter. Oh, but we shall. Ellen said so. You're mistaken, Louisa. I said nothing of the kind. But you did. You promised. Louisa, will you be quiet? <laughs> Oh, my heavens, this is the last straw. You'll drive me as crazy as yourselves. Oh, Ellen. <laughs> Miss Fisk. I'm sorry I didn't mean to say that, but I've had about as much as I can endure. <laughs> Emily, take Louisa upstairs. I must stop your crying, Louisa. There's nothing to cry about. Well, do you hear? Go upstairs, both of you. And close the door behind you. That was a cruel thing to say. But it's true. One with her telescope and the other with her mania for collecting things. They are insane, both of them. Please don't use that word again. Emily was right. But then people who have all they want never seem to understand how much the smallest things mean to those who haven't. Oh, really? I don't think this calls for a sermon. I've been more than generous to you and your sisters. Well, people have always been very generous to you, Miss Fisk. My sisters and I have never had any friends to send us money. Well, that's hardly my fault, is it? No. But don't you ever feel that you might have a responsibility to those less fortunate than you? I don't know what you're talking about. 
Life hasn't been very kind to us, Miss Fisk. Every penny we've ever had, I've had to work for. Every penny. But at least we've our self-respect. How dare you? How dare you criticize my life? Do you think I don't envy women who have respectability, who have families, who aren't just forgotten and pensioned off when they've lost their stock in trade? Well, then you can't blame me for fighting for my family. Well, that's very admirable, but it's your family and not mine. And let me tell you this. Your sisters, insane or not, have overstayed their welcome. I invited them here for two days and they've stayed six weeks, or perhaps you were planning to keep them here forever. Well, I... I had thought that... that I might pay something out of my wages toward their keep. Oh, Ellen, you're a hypocrite. You're worse. You're a cheat. You meant to foist your wretched brood on me and bleed me white. And when I saw through your little scheme, you had the insolence to turn on me and abuse me. But you've chosen the wrong woman. You get those sisters of yours out of this house at once. And you take a month's wages and go with them. Miss Fisk! you in bed? Why are you prowling about at this hour? Miss Fisk, may I come in? I must talk with you, please. Well, mind your tongue. We don't want any more of this afternoon's unpleasantness. I'm sorry about that. I was wrong. I shouldn't have spoken to you as I did. No, you shouldn't. Miss Fisk, do you remember the letter that arrived the day I went away to London? Yes. What about it? It was from their landlady. Emily and Louisa had, well, been a little difficult. She'd sent for the police. Huh? They were going to be put away in an institution. Well, the landlady was quite right. It's where they belong. But, Miss Fisk, you don't understand. They're my sisters. You don't know what I've gone through for them. But well, they've no one else in the world to turn to but me. I pleaded with the police to release them. They agreed on one condition that they were to remain in my personal care, that I was to be responsible for them. And if there were any more complaints, they were to be put away forever. That's why I can't send them away. Well, all this devotion is very admirable, Ellen. But I fail to see how I can help in any way at all. Oh, but you can. You can, Miss Fisk. I thought perhaps they might use the attic upstairs. They could stay there out of the way where you'll never see them. They could use the back stairs when they come in and out. Ellen, what are you talking about? Oh, I promise they'll never come anywhere near. You'll never even know they're in the house. I'll look after them myself. I'll cook their meals for them. Oh, I promise there won't be any more trouble. Miss Fisk, they must be with me. They must. I'll pay for their keep. I'll work for nothing. Please. Oh, please, Miss Fisk. Ellen, have you quite gone out of your mind? You must be blind if you can't realize they'd always be getting in my way. No, you pack them off tomorrow. Oh, but Miss Fisk, won't no, you No, Ellen, please? my mind is made up. If you want to, you can stay here for a few days until you've found another situation. Now run along to bed. Make certain they leave tomorrow. You wouldn't want me to be sending for the police, would you? Good night, Ellen. I'm tired. Good night. going to send us away. I'm not going to send you away. We heard you. We were listening. Isn't she terrible, Ellen? She's wicked. I'm not going to send you away. Never. If you're not going to send us away, what are you going to do? wanted to explore an old castle. Will it have a dungeon, do you think? They all have dungeons. 
with bats. Oh, no, dear. Bats are in belfries. Well, there's sure to be secret passageways and places where they used to hide things. Like that. I'm sure Miss Fisk has lots of exciting things hidden in there. Her jewels, I'm sure. I've looked in all her boxes and haven't been able to find them. Are you both ready? Oh, yes, quite. I managed to pack all the lunch into one bag. Mine. Come here and sit down. I want to talk to you both. Now, I haven't told you the real reason why you're being sent away for the whole day. The truth is, I want to be entirely alone with Miss Fisk for a few hours. Is that why you got rid of Lucy, too? I didn't get rid of Lucy, Emily. She had a toothache. Oh, well, indeed, you know that's not true. She didn't want to go at all. I said she had a toothache, Louisa. Now, listen. Last night, while you were both asleep, I had a long talk with Miss Fisk. She's tired of the marshes and wants to travel for a bit. I've persuaded her to sell this house to me. Not really, Ellen. We haven't discussed price yet. That's why I must be alone with her, so that we can talk reasonably with nothing to distract us. She may want more than you're prepared to pay. Oh, I'm prepared to pay quite a big price, Emily. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, Emily, aren't you excited? Shh, Louisa, be quiet. Now, there's one more thing. The most important. You see this Bible, both of you? Well, I want you to swear on it, my father's memory, that you never repeat a word of my buying this house as long as you live. What do I say? Just say, I swear. Oh, I swear. You too, Emily. I won't swear on the Bible. It's wicked. If you don't, Emily, I shan't buy the house and I shall send you both back to London. Oh, Emily, be sensible. I don't like being made to do things. I promise. Now, remember, that's a sacred oath. Here's Bates. Hurry now, there's no time to waste. Slowly, Bates. Please don't let them get cold. You can take your time. I shan't be expecting you back before dusk. Very good, ma'am. Goodbye, Ellen. I wish you could come. I wish you were coming, too. Goodbye, Ellen. Goodbye. Goodbye, dears. Have a good time. Thank you. To dear Louisa and dear Emily, may we never meet again.
May we come in? Yes. Oh. I'd like to speak to Miss Ellen. Unless Miss Fisk is back. No, she's still away. I'll fetch Ellen. We're making jam. Good evening. It isn't a very good one, is it? No. As a matter of fact, it's not. Cats and dogs. Good evening, sisters. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. We were just in the middle of putting up our quince gem. Please don't apologize. I'm afraid we've come on a begging errand. Our supply of oil hasn't arrived from Rochester. And the Reverend Mother wondered if we might borrow a can for over Sunday. Why, of course. Lucy! to the shed and bring in a can of paraffin. Yes, Miss Allen. Won't you sit down, sisters? always turn up, you know. What are you doing here, hanging about with the storm and all? I have a little business inside. I wanted to make sure the coast was clear. What business? Listen, Ducky, did Miss Fisk about? No, she's away. Am I, Aunt Ellen? She's here right enough, and them two crazy sisters of hers. Does she know I've been here before? No, Miss Fisk said not to say. Good. Get on with your work. I'll come in the front door like a proper gentleman. Remember, we don't know each other. Not that we shan't. Later. I'm very particular who I know. For a moment, when I saw the candles burning, I thought Miss Fisk was back. Ellen's taken to lighting them lately. She thinks Miss Fisk would like her to. She says it keeps her memory burning. Oh, when are you expecting her back? Well, I really couldn't say, sister. She hasn't written for over a fortnight. I was so surprised to learn she'd gone. She hadn't mentioned she was planning a journey anywhere. No, it was quite unexpected. She had a letter from some old friends inviting her on a trip. And as they were sailing the very next morning... The Reverend Mother's been wondering what she'll do about the rent from the little three-acre field we hire from Miss Fisk. Well, I'm managing all her affairs while she's away, sister. If you'll send it to me, I'll forward it when I get her next address. Here, Miss Ellen. <laughs> Good evening, sisters. Thank you. Oh! Well, that seems rather heavy. Run along with sisters, Lucy, and give them a hand. That's very kind of you, Miss Ellen. We've been bothered enough. Uh, I'll be glad to go. I'll get my cloak. I think you're so brave going out into the dark. I... I hate the dark. It frightens me. It shouldn't, my dear. Don't you believe we're watched over? Oh, yes. But I'm never quite sure who's watching us. 
I'm quite ready. Well, we'd better be going. Good night, and thank you very much. Good night, sisters. Good night. There, dear. You carry the oil, and I'll hold the umbrella over us both. Good night again. Good night. Good night. Well, I must get back to the Jan. Ellen was unusually nice to Sister Teresa, wasn't she? They were quite chatty together. Louisa. Yes. I think Ellen's changing. I hope she's not going to get in league with the nuns. Against us? Oh, Ellen would never do that. She's taken to lighting those candles. I think I'll blow them out. Ellen wouldn't like that. She have everything her own way. <laughs> Emily, what have you done? Something I wanted to do. You like that? I won't eat you. Who are you? And what do you want? Dear Aunt Ellen, after all these years, what a family reunion. I'm Albert, don't you remember me? Albert! <laughs> of course, Rose's boy. Right, so yeah. it is. Fancy Albert being here. Where on earth did you come from? Gravesend. On a duck's back. <laughs> <laughs> it is Albert, right enough. Always saying funny things. Oh, he's soaked through. Yes, so I see. Well, don't stand there dripping all over my best rug. Get along to the kitchen fire with your wet things. Oh, that's more like my loving auntie. My very distant auntie. <gasps> now we'll have fun with Albert here. I'll go and fetch him a dressing gown. And I'll get him a towel so he can dry himself. Blimey, if that don't half make me mouth water. Some nice tasty grub and something warm to chase it down the hatchway. Ha, <laughs> that's what I need. Albert, tell me, why have you come here? That could wait till I'm dry outside and not so dry in. Here you are, Albert. Thanks, me old cup of tea. Emily, slice off some beef and put out the bread and cheese. A pint of half and half would be the proper ticket with that. This isn't a tavern, Albert. Well, then, uh, how about a spot of brandy to uh, take the damp out of my throat, eh? I'm not sure there's any left in the decanter. We have some in the cellar. Oh, a cellar, eh? Your ladyship, allow me to lead you to it. No. I'll go myself. Make way for the Duchess. Here's the best on the marshes. I see, Auntie. Is this all yours? No, of course not. Belongs to the woman I work for, Miss Fisk. Where is she, might I ask? Away. Five years, Auntie, old girl. What of it? You've changed. You've not. Same big blue eyes, though. The still lady touch me not. Let go of me. I'm in no mood for your foolishness. From the way you seem to be all keyed up, a little of my foolishness might do you no harm. both of you. I want to talk with Albert. But we don't want to go to bed. Oh, no, we want to stay and talk to Albert. Go on, do as Aunt Ellen says, toddle off to bye bye like good little girls. Your way, one sip to wet your whistles. It'll make you sleep tight. You'll sleep oh. tight? Oh, well, Albert, you are silly. I don't think they're better, Albert. What's the harm? You don't have a long lost nephew every night in the week. Pet some glasses, Emily. Oh, very well, but not too much now. Just a teeny thimble full for me, Albert. <laughs> How about you, Aunt Ellen? Nothing for me, thank you. Now then, my Siamese twins, 
What about a toast, eh? Well, I don't know any. In that case, here's to absent friends. Absent friends. Ellen, I suppose we should think of Miss Fisk. <laughs> Put out those candles. What candles? Oh, those. It must have been the wind. Good night, Albert. Good night, my lady. Good night, Albert. Good night. It wasn't the wind, Ellen. Say, Artie, you've not turned Roman, have you? I do this for a friend. Now, Albert, stop all this auntie nonsense and let's get down to cases. Why have you come here and what do you want? Well, Artie, I mean, Ellen, to cut it fine, I'm sort of taking a compulsory holiday from the bank over in Gravesend where I've been working. In other words, you've lost your job. I've given it up. You haven't done anything wrong, have you? Well, I, I sort of helped myself to a little salary I wasn't entitled to. You mean you've stolen money? This is rattling good brandy. Answer me, Albert. You've got it. How much? Small matter of a hundred pounds. I see. Well, I suppose you want me to give you the hundred pounds so that you can put it back. I'm afraid it's too late for that. They found out. The police, sir. Uh... The police? A friend passed me the tip they were coming, so I, uh, I took French leave. But they'll follow you. They'll come here. <laughs> Don't worry. No one knows I've got relations out here on the marshes. I'll be safe here for a lifetime. Well, you're certainly not going to stay here for a lifetime. But surely you don't mind me staying here for a little while, do you? <laughs> Till it all blows over? And then what do you propose to do? Clear out of the country, America, Australia, any or where. I'm, uh, I'm counting on you to help me. I'll need money for my passage. I'm, I'm stony. Won't cost much. Steerage. I don't see why I should concern myself with your affairs. I'll land in prison if you don't. Oh, you're not the sort to turn anybody down who was in trouble and needed your help. You wouldn't fail your own flesh and blood. I'm no flesh and blood of yours, Albert. Won't you give me a chance to start again? I promise, cross my heart. I'll never do anything wrong again for the rest of me natural. Oh, let me go. Very well, I'll do it. Bless you, Ellen. You're a daisy, you are. We'll talk about it in the morning. You can sleep on the sofa tonight. I don't mind where I sleep. But mind you, you can only stay until I've had time to arrange your passage on the boat. Anything you say, Ellen, old girl. What's that? That's just the maid. She's been out on an errand. Lucy? Yes, miss? There'll be a gentleman staying the night. A gentleman stay? A relation. He'll sleep in here. Now, you better go to your room and change your wet clothes before you start sneezing. Yes, miss. Good night. Good night. Good night, uh, Lucy, isn't it? Yes, Lucy. Well, I fancy that's all for tonight, Aunt Ellen. I'll just have a weed before I turn in. <laughs> the last of the wreck. You seem to be taking this all very lightly, Albert. You have told me the worst, haven't you? I mean, there isn't anything else. What else? There are worse things than stealing. As for instance? <laughs> oh, no, there's no blood on my hands. Putting people out calls for real nerve, you know. Yes. Good night, Albert. Nighty night.
Did you enjoy the sermon, Mr. Bates? Mighty powerful, miss. Yes, it was, wasn't it? But there was a lot of it I didn't understand. Uh-huh. That part that went... How was it? The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But... But... The righteous are as bold as a lion. I was just fooling around with this padlock last night and it uh, came off. Oh, you shouldn't have. That's where Miss Fisk keeps her valuables. How does she get at them? With a pickaxe? Look. Well, oh, I never. All bricked up. I wonder when that was done. Wasn't that way the last time I was here. Oh, so you've had your nose in there before, have you? Funny what nasty thoughts people have sometimes, isn't it? Funny how they're right sometimes, isn't it? Anyone would want to brick up a place like that. Maybe Miss Fisk put her jewels in there before she went away. You know, not wanting to take any chances leaving them about, even with your Aunt Ellen. If there are any sparklers in there, I wouldn't mind having a peep at them. I'm sure you wouldn't. And neither would you, I dare say. In fact, I... I'm sure you'd like the feel of some round your swan-like neck. A pretty pink ear like that calls for diamonds. A wandering hand like yours calls for a slap in the face. It's wicked to slap a man's face on Sunday. The better the day, the better the deed. Well, that leaves my conscience clear. I'll scream. What's that? <coughs> what do you think I'm made of? Sugar and spice. And everything nice. Blimey, you're strong. It's a wig. Whose is it? It's Miss Fisk's. Oh, it's her best one. She's as bold as a coot. Oh. oh, she didn't take it with her. Hello. Oh, she left a lot of her fancy dresses, too. Perhaps she's going to buy some new ones up in London. These are new, most of them. You'd better put that back up. All right. Okay, get her on this chair. You know, it is odd she only took one wig. On a trip, anything might happen. Fire or a gust of wind. Or... Here's that Emily coming up the path. You'd better be off. Hello, me old cup of tea. What are you doing with those bulrushes? Looking for Moses? You're making fun of me. Naughty boy. I'm glad you're back before the others. It doesn't often I have a chance for a tete our tete with the family's fairest. You're never serious about anything, Albert. I was never more serious in my life. The storm did an enormous amount of damage. The roads into Rochester and Gravesend were completely flooded. The postman told me. I hope they stay that way. Allow me, Empress. <laughs> There's only one letter today. It's for Miss Fisk. Oh, is it? Cozy nest you got here. What's going to happen to you when Miss Fisk gets back? Will she let you stay on, do you think? She isn't coming back. 
Oh, why not? Ellen's bought the house. Hey. Ah, oh, go on. Oh, yes, it's quite true. It's a secret, though. Ellen made us swear on the Bible we wouldn't tell anyone. But you're one of the family, so it's all right. Why should she want to keep it a secret, eh? I don't know. It was all done in a great hurry. Louisa and I were sent off to Rochester for the day, and when we came back that night, Miss Fisk was gone, and it was all over. Oh, oh dear. You won't tell Ellen I told you, will you, Albert? No. We'll make that our little secret, shall we? All right. <laughs> It'll be rather fun having a secret from Ellen. She thinks she's the clever one, but she isn't. Not always. No. Not always. Albert. What? Good morning. May we come in? Who's that? A couple of nuns from the Priory. You talk to them, Albert. I've got to tidy up the orchard. Oh, I didn't know there was a young man staying here. Is Miss Ellen about? I'm sorry, she's gone over to church at Cooling. I'm her nephew. Can I help you? We came to return this. She lent us a little oil last night. We ran short. Thanks. Oh, yes, and this. It's the rent for the little field. Your aunt will understand. I'll give it to her. We're so looking forward to Miss Fisk's return. She's a dear friend of ours. Oh, uh, have you, uh, have you heard from her lately? No, not a word. I think the Reverend Mother's a trifle hurt she hasn't written. In fact, she didn't even tell her she was going away. Not very chummy, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> well, uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. you up to? Fetch me a knife, Ducky. What's that? Better for Miss Fisk. She's not going to open it. Oh, no. Wouldn't think of it. What's it say? Dear madam, regarding your instructions to forward the amount of the enclosed check in five pound notes, your signature appears to differ from that with which we are acquainted. We shall be obliged if you would kindly confirm same by signing it afresh in your usual manner. <whistles> 50 pounds. Yeah, notice the date. October 14th. That's three days ago. She's been gone longer than that. Since the beginning of September. She probably made it out from wherever she is. Yes, yeah, she could have. Hey, wait a minute. In that case, why do they send the reply to her here? Do you see who it's made payable to? Ellen Creed. What of it? I expect it's a housekeeping money. Maybe. Where's the glue pot? Over there. Well, get it for me. Dip your finger in it. I should say not. I've had no hand in this. Haven't you? Oh, you are a filthy pig. Now go on, seal it up. Go on. I don't forget you're in this as deep as I am now. I wish you'd never come here. Uh -huh. I don't know what comes over me when you are around. You won't give me away to Miss Ellen, will you? I won't if you keep your mouth shut. Here come the performing seals. Not a word, mind you. Albert. Hello, aunts. Had a 
a nice prey. You should have been at church, Albert. The minister told us all about hell. You would have enjoyed the part about the lost souls sizzling in the bottomless pit. Would I now? Ugh. It sounds frightening. Ellen, where is hell? Hell is like the kingdom of heaven. It's within. Well, that reminds me. One of your religious friends was here. She, uh, she left you this. It's the rent for some field or other. She didn't see you, did she? I couldn't avoid it. That was Sister Teresa. She's Miss Fisk's friend. She doesn't like us any more than Miss Fisk did. Oh, didn't Miss Fisk like you? No, she was horrid to us. Louisa, she... run upstairs and change your dress. You won't want to sit about the house in your best all day. No, I shan't, shall I? No, of course not. Albert. Hmm? I don't want you to mention Miss Fisk again in front of my sisters. They quarreled with her. And it upsets them very much to talk about her. I'm sorry, nobody told me. What did you quarrel about? I didn't say I quarreled with her. Did she by any chance be the friend you were lighting those candles for last night? Yes. When did she die? Die? Who said anything about her being dead? Well, I just assumed she was. You don't light candles for the living, do you? I don't know. I just thought they stood for prayer. I must find Emily. Oh, by the way, the postman gave her a letter for Miss Fisk. From her bank, I believe. Give it to me. I'm managing all her affairs while she's away. Anything important? Yes, rather. Let's get an answer in the post immediately. Stylish looking piano you've got here. Don't distract me, Albert. I must concentrate. I'm sorry. Don't mind me, are they? I say you are up to date. I didn't expect to find a copy of the Mikado way out here on the marshes. Don't do that. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to distract you. It's just that I happen to dislike that particular tune, that's all. Yes, it is a bit on the morbid side. Miss Ellen, how soon will you want dinner? About a quarter of an hour, Lucy. I'm just going to post this letter at the crossing. Let me go, Ellen. I could do with a sniff of air. No, thank you. I prefer to attend to this myself. She's just written a reply to that letter we opened. I thought it would be interesting to see what she says. Oh. Dear sir, check something incorrect, something owing, something, something, wrist. Yeah, what does that word look like to you? There, see? S P R. S P R. Oh. Sprained. That's it. Owing to a sprained wrist. Something yours, Leon... Leonora Fisk. She signed it, Leonora Fisk. What's it mean, Albert? What do you think? It looks as if she's pretending to be Miss Fisk. And getting money on the strength of it. Brilliant. If that's true, she's a thief. Like you. Shut up. 
What'll happen when Miss Fisk comes back? Suppose she isn't coming back. Suppose she's died somewhere. And Ellen's the only one who knows. You can't die and only one person know it. Oh, can't you? I'm not so sure. One thing I do know, she'd never take the risk unless she was positive Miss Fisk was out of the way for good. All right, assume she's dead. Aunt Ellen's tapping the funds. It might be years before anybody would find out. Why should she reap all the benefit? There might be some pickings in it for us. Wouldn't you like to see a bit of the world? Have some fun with me? You'd tempt old Nick himself, wouldn't you? You've got to help me get proof. I don't want to do anything mean or underhanded. Would I ask you to? Use your eyes and keep your ears open, that's all. What do you say? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps this will help you make up your mind. Well? I'll help you, Albert. Here she comes. Look sharp now. Back to the kitchen. He almost made me frighten myself. Hurry up, hurry up. All right, shut up. Hey, go in the kitchen and make some tea. I'll take this with you. Go on, hurry. Good night, Bates. Good night, ma'am. Now, don't forget, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Very good, ma'am. Have a successful trip? Yes. I have your ticket. You leave tomorrow. Do I? Where are my sisters? I sent them off to bed. They were getting a little out of hand. Then I dare say it wasn't their fault. Lucy's making you some hot tea. We uh, we thought you might be cold. I'll be down again as soon as I've said goodnight to them. She's packing me off tomorrow. We're going to move fast. Haven't changed your mind, have you? I couldn't refuse you anything now. That's my girl. We thought you'd never come, Ellen. I was frightened. Frightened? Yes. There were such funny noises. Oh, it was only the rats. What have you been doing all the evening? We played a game of cribbage. Of course, Albert cheated, but it was rather fun watching him cheat. He hasn't said anything about Miss Fisk, has he? No. Miss Fisk? No. Why should he? And you haven't either of you said anything to him about my buying the house, have you? Oh, no, Ellen. Don't you remember? You made us swear on the Bible we wouldn't. Well, I think you'd better go to sleep now, both of you. I'm going downstairs and have a hot cup of tea before I go to bed. For the tea, Lucy.
Thank you, Lucy. You may go to bed now. Yes, Miss Ellen. Good night. Good night. Well, Ollie, where's your cane? From the look on your face, I'd say you were about to take down my britches and give me a dozen. It's a boat sailing for Canada on Friday. You're sailing with it. I'm not sure I want to go to Canada. Yet a while? You haven't much choice, have you? I don't know. I'm getting quite fond of this place. The air suits me. I'm very happy here for the time being. Well, I'm not happy having you here. Why? Well, it isn't safe since Sister Teresa knows you're staying here with us. The wrong sort of talk would bring the police around here in no time. I don't propose to risk a scandal on your account. There's more to it than that. Lucy's apt to talk. <laughs> I don't think we need worry about her. No, you've made sure of that. Whatever do you mean by that? You know what I mean, you cheap little backstairs. Stop it, Ellen. You're going to make me lose my temper. Your temper. You'll be leaving here first thing tomorrow morning and that'll be the end of you and your temper. I shouldn't try to bluff me if I were you. I'm not trying to bluff you, Albert. I'm ordering you. And if I shouldn't choose to be ordered? Well, I can't throw you out physically, but I can send for the police. And have your scandal. <laughs> really, you're being very inconsistent now, Auntie dear. You won't send for the police. Why are you so sure? Because you've another reason. A more important reason for not wanting the police here. For wanting me out of this house as quickly as possible. As a matter of fact, you're right. Ah, oh, now we're getting down to brass tacks. Would it concern Miss Fisk by any chance? It would and it does. I met her in town today. She's coming back. She's coming back? And why shouldn't she? I thought she'd gone for good. How utterly absurd of you, Albert. There's never been any question of her not coming back. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, you play the fool so much with Louisa and Emily. I was afraid you'd blurt it out. As it is, I'll have to break it to them gently, because it means they'll have to go too. Well, my little country holidays obviously come to an end. I don't know what the blazes I'll do in Canada, but I suppose one can starve there as well as anywhere else. You'll get on. I'll give you a little something to start off with. For your mother's sake. I suppose I should extend my most humble thanks. No, that from you would be too much. Well, if that's all we have to say to each other, I may as well get up to bed. A night's sleep wouldn't do you any harm either. You look a bit played out. I must lock up first. Shall I be seeing you in the morning before I leave? Yes. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Auntie. I had a funny dream last night. Oh, did you? I dreamt Miss Fisk was dead. Good night, Auntie. Good night, Albert.
morning, Bates. Uh, Miss Creed ordered me. It's about the train, but she didn't say which one. Shh. Bates, cancel it. Miss Creed's not feeling well. Oh, uh, nothing serious, I hope, sir. No, nothing serious. Oh, well, in that case, I'd better be hopping along. <laughs> She did look ill when I took in the early tea. I wish we hadn't done it. Put yourself together. You'll ruin everything. Now, go on upstairs. Go on. She might have died. Shut up. Well, she didn't. And we proved what we wanted. Miss Fisk's dead and she knows it. I wonder when she died. One more go and I'll tell you when and how she died. Now, go on upstairs. What did Bates want, Albert? You brought the latest news from the outside world. It'll tickle you to death. Weep and whiskers are coming back in again. I don't think this is any time for joking, Albert, with Ellen the way she is. You're taking the whole thing too seriously, me old Brussels sprout. She was walking in her sleep and had a nightmare. <laughs> That's all. It wasn't a nightmare, Albert. Oh? What was it, then? She says she saw a ghost. <gasps> in that case, lay another place for breakfast. Do you really think it was a ghost, Emily? If it were only a nightmare, we wouldn't have heard it, too. Heard what? The music. Miss Fisk's music. Do you know, Emily, I'm sometimes afraid Miss Fisk will get the better of Ellen. I sometimes think she wants to come back and turn us out. I think Miss Fisk's here. Now. Well, what are you two whispering about? Would you better go for your walk now? Yes, Ellen. Anything you say, Ellen. I think you're strong enough to be up. Yes, dear, I'm quite all right now. Hadn't you better have a doctor? No, a doctor couldn't do any good. Why are you two standing there like a couple of owls? Well, Emily's been frightening me. You've been imagining things, both of you. Now, run along for your walk. Whatever you say, Ellen, you know best. you down today. Why aren't you ready yet? Bates will be here at any moment. Bates has been here and gone. I sent him away. What do you mean by interfering with my arrangements? Well, I didn't like to go and leave you not feeling well. I'm quite recovered now, thank you. It was a queer turn you had last night. What happened? Nothing. You know, you should really do something about your nerves. This isn't the first time you walked in your sleep, according to Emily. What's Emily been telling you? Just her usual chatter. They do say, though, that people who walk in their sleep have something on their conscience. What's behind that remark, Albert? Nothing. It was you last night. Yes. Me and Lucy. She knows too? Not what I know. That's something you and I are going to keep to ourselves. Provided, of course, you treat me right. What are you going to do? Well, as I said, I'm very happy here. I think with your financial assistance, I'll be able to adjust things at the bank. And we can all settle down in peace. A contented little family. You mean you propose to go on living here? With me? Why not? Well, you'd never be quite sure, would you? You might not enjoy your meals. 
You wouldn't dare the second time. It takes a lot of courage to kill for the first time, Albert. Once you've sold your soul to the devil, it becomes easier. Much easier. All right. Give me 500 pounds and I'll clear up for good. And keep my mouth shut. I'm not afraid of you, Albert, and your shabby little tricks. In the middle of the night, you may fancy yourself cutting quite a figure. But it's broad daylight now. It's those nuns. Get that out of sight. And yourself with it. Good day, sisters. I must talk to you right away. Are you alone? Why, yes. What's the matter? It's really none of my business, and I I shouldn't have come, but the police, they've been to the Priory. What about? They're searching for a young man who stole money from a bank over Gravesend Way. And from the description, I suspected it was your nephew. And I thought if he were told, he might have a chance to do the right thing and give himself up. It is your nephew. Yes, but they mustn't search here. Well, they've gone over to Decoy Farm first. I heard one of them say so. Oh, Miss Ellen, have I done wrong in coming to warn you? I don't know, sister. I had a brother rather like that. He went wrong, too. People are so easily lost, aren't they? Yes, they are. Poor girl, you have so many burdens. If you're referring to Albert, he means absolutely nothing to me. No one does, for that matter. Except Emily and Louisa. Well, if at any time we at the Priory can do anything to make things easier for you or your sisters, don't hesitate to turn to us. It's very kind of you, Sister Teresa. But you know we're not of your faith. In my father's house are many mansions. Blimey, I thought they'd never go. Thanks for putting in a good word for me. Decoy Farm, is it? That'll give me a chance to get around behind them to the river. Well, hurry, there's no time to lose. Yes, I'll get my clothes. staring at me like that. I've got to move fast. Where's that money and boat tickets? You mean she heard all about that? Yes. Hey, you better make a dash for it, too. Don't stand there mooning about. Put your things on and let's get out of here. I'm not going. Are you out of your mind? You know what they'll do to you? You'd better hurry, Albert. If that don't beat the cards. Well. So long, Ellen. No hard feelings.
Robert. He was playing tag with some men. But he didn't <laughs> win. They caught him. He got quite annoyed. <laughs> oh, Ellen, look, we found a lot of jackdaw feathers. We are going to tie them into bundles and make little dusters. Where are you going? I'm going to Decoy Farm. There's some gentlemen there from Gravesend, and I want to see them. You won't bring them back here, will you, Ellen? It's so nice and peaceful by ourselves. No, dear. I try not to bring them back here. You have been happy here, haven't you? We are happy here, aren't we, Emily? Yes, it's much better than London. It's so good of you to have bought this house for us. You have been clever, Ellen. Ellen, don't worry about us. We can look after ourselves. 